My mom was very generous um, and sweet. Uh, she was very creative and artsy fartsy. Um, she loved animals. She loved her kids and her family. She could draw and paint and mm -hmm. yeah, she's the most creative woman I've ever known. I knew something was wrong when I came home from work one morning. I had worked overnight in the emergency department in Clinton where we lived and uh, Polly was headed down the stairs and we crisscrossed each other. I said, where are you going? And she said, oh, I made an appointment with the doctor. And I said, really, what, what for? And she said, oh, no big deal. She, she got her exam done and it was a bad outcome. She had a great big a large tumor, about 14 centimeters. It was just a very unfortunate thing. Polly became very sick after one of her surgeries. Uh, she needed to be life flighted. She was, her life was on the line late one night and her doctor decided to send her down to Barnes Hospital in St. Louis and they called a helicopter to life flight her down to St. Louis. And uh, fortunately, they turned things around down there. But a few months later, when she had become much more ill and all hope was lost, she was dying what should arrive in my mailbox, but a bill for $17,000 from the insurance company saying, we're not gonna pay for that helicopter ride. And you know, I think that's just ridiculous. It's absolutely shameful that here in America, while you're planning a funeral, while you're trying to grieve over your dying wife, you're also being faced with a, an insurance company coming down on you for $17,000, um, that, that your doctor felt that you needed that late that night. I think it's outrageous that uh, people don't get the care that they need because they don't have the money right then and there. And, uh, and it, it's only here in America, and I, you know, I think that we can do a whole lot better than that. Yeah, I mean, I see my dad being selfless and caring every day, especially when my mom was sick. You know, he was always there supporting her and his kids. People say that I am like my mom in a few ways, yeah. I would hope so. I think Polly also left you your gentle spirit, you know, and your brothers too, especially your little brother. You know, I think mm -hmm. that whether that's genetic or whether that was something that she modeled for for the kids, um, she she was a very gentle woman who very 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 sweet woman who um, you know left that for the kids. And I think about her all the time. You know, I, I keep pushing because, you know, she pushed me in the throes of her illness. If, you know, if, if even while ailing, if, if she could ask me to do that then, then, you know, it's very tiring. It's exhausting, frankly. It's, uh, um, it's not a decision that's lightly made, but uh, if, if my first wife, you know, while dying of cancer said, go change the world, make the world better, uh, then, you know, I think it's, uh, yeah, that's, I'm living up to her legacy by continuing to pound on that door. Yeah, I think everything that my dad has been through with my mother's illness, all the struggles, uh, really helps him to understand and empathize with other people struggling, especially in the healthcare area.